That's a fairly simple point I've been trying to make is that I, I think Perry's denial of top that the, the sort of top down bottom up picture is should be the basis of all attempts to account for emergence is perfectly compatible mm -hmm. with the view that parts of physics are are fundamental right it seems just true of the sociology and history of science that if a special science most special sciences are if they're related at all to each other, we're not quite sure how they're related to each other. But whenever a conflict, and so a conflict can emerge between special sciences, and there's no the empirical work will have to sort it out. But when a special science contradicts fundamental physics, it's the special science that has to shit that, that has to be changed, right? And there is and, a and, but there's case. no reason you don't have to. Darwin was that. very worried about Kelvin's that no, primacy no claim of, about the age of the sun and the amount of energy it can yeah. put out. Yeah, yeah, but that see. primacy of physics claim, that, that fact that physics trumps, fundamental physics trumps, uh, that's perfectly compatible with the idea that you, it doesn't require us to suppose that uh, it's because physics describes a bedrock level, right, and then there are other levels stacked on top of it. Um, physics, it's in fundamental physics, just is, it seems to me, the study of those universal constraints. Uh, that apply everywhere. It might help if we had a simple toy model of what we're saying doesn't happen. <laughs> um, uh, and it occurs to me a nice example might be think about the rules of chess. And think about somebody who tries to derive the rules of chess from the physics of chess pieces moving around. <laughs> and think, now, you know, Queen goes on her own color. Jesus, now, you know. And they're trying to figure out what affinities there are and trying to devise that from physics or, or the, the, you know, the castling rule. And they finally throw up their hands and say, these are deep regularities, but they're at their own level. They don't reduce, to, they just don't reduce to physics. Now, you can imagine somebody having a view about biology or any of the, or, or sociology, which is the view that, as it turns out, there are the rules of the game in these higher sciences that just bloody are, and, and maybe there's a historical explanation of how they came to be the rules, but even those aren't really going to be explicable in terms of, of the underlying physics. That at least gives us a model of what I think none of us accept. We all think that whatever good sense of emergence there is, there's, no, there's nothing that is a principle like that. It's always going to emerge from, from physics. Yeah, I think I can actually simultaneously disagree with Massimo and Steve a little bit, uh, <laughs> in the sense that uh, I it's think we can do better. Yes, <laughs> uh, that might be outside both of you and inside, but I think we can do better than Leon's history to argue um, for the what we're referring to as the microscopic or more fundamental level being uh, more comprehensive than the macroscopic level. But I think it meant. You know, maybe part of the contentiousness comes in and using words like explain or because when we're talking about the relationships between these different levels. I think that it's, on the one hand, plausible and apparently true that you can have these macroscopic regularities that could have been exactly the same and equally true with very different microscopic underlying substrates. And therefore, in some sense, maybe exactly that sense, deserve to be thought of as independent rules. But it's also true that there is this more comprehensive theory that has a wider domain of applicability with the feature that in the region of that microscopic theory that overlaps with the macroscopic theory, the microscopic theory entails the macroscopic theory. You can have thermodynamics and many other substrates, but once you know what the substrate is, you're, we're going to have thermodynamics. You're not going to have anything else. And I think that we can stop. There. I don't think it's necessary. I mean, I, I have many times in the past, and I understand the desire to say, now we have explained the macroscopic regularities, but what if we didn't say that? What would change? I mean, both levels exist and are interesting to talk about. And it's if we're sticking to understanding what happens in the world, I think we can just say that and then use for our sort of personal motivational purposes whether or not that counts as an explanation or a justification or more fundamental or whatever. Well, when you say once we have... The, the, this level, the microscopic level, we have thermodynamics. I, uh, that's just another way of rephrasing that thermodynamics is entailed by the. I like the word entailed, but then when. It, so saying that is fine, I wouldn't argue with that, but maybe there's daylight in between saying that and saying 
the reason why thermodynamics is true is because of the underlying atomic. Well, I don't see. I don't see yeah, I, I don't see any daylight. <laughs> <laughs>